Hello everyone, today's video is all about getting the UK state pension if you are planning on emigrating overseas. Specifically if you are thinking about moving to the EU, Spain, Portugal or wherever it may be, want to spend some years in retirement in warmer climes, um, what will happen to your UK state pension? Well, the standard rule is that if you have enough qualifying years, which are currently 35 qualifying years, and I've done a separate video on this, but assuming you get, you're entitled to the full UK state pension, it doesn't matter where in the world you go, you should be entitled to that full uh, UK pension. You don't have to live in the UK to get the UK state pension. That's the basic rule. But then there's a few little extensions and caveats to that. So let's just talk through that. So what if um, you don't have qualifying years. Well, I've done separate videos on how you can top that up, but let me just give you a specific example about what is happening. Changes to the rules that are coming in from the 1st of January next year, 2022. Now, what's happening then is that if you decide from 2022 onwards that you'd like to emigrate to somewhere in the EU and start taking your UK state pension, that UK state pension will be curtailed, it will be reduced if there are any years in your working life that you spent working in Canada, Australia or New Zealand. So if you've spent years working in those territories and you then emigrate to somewhere else outside of uh, the UK in the EU from 2022 onwards, your state pension could be reduced. So you may say, well, hang on a minute. If you were working in these foreign countries anyway, how come they would count towards your 35 years to begin with? Well, what happens is certain territories around the world have what we call reciprocal social security arrangements with the UK, meaning that let's say you go and work in New Zealand for a number of years, you pay into their national insurance equivalent, whatever it's called, but actually there's a deal done behind the scenes between the New Zealand authorities and the UK authorities to say that the money that you put in to the, U to the New Zealand system will be reflected and recorded as an entitlement for your UK state pension because you don't have any sort of desire to um, live in New Zealand permanently, sort of certainly not take any retirement benefits there. So the money that you pay into New Zealand's national insurance system equivalent will nevertheless get recorded for your qualifying years in the UK, which is terrific. Now, it's not every country in the world that has this arrangement, far from it. It's, it's only a minority of countries, really. There's a, there's a list of maybe um, a couple of dozen. Uh, that's why certain expats, when they go abroad, will lose out qualifying years, um, full stop, depending on where they go. But others, if you've been in places like Canada, New Zealand, you will get this, this credit for the UK state pension, even though you're paying into the national insurance of the other country, that's that's how it works, which is good, which is which is great. Interestingly enough, Australia changed that. They had a bit of a fallout with the UK about five years ago. And now they stopped the reciprocal arrangements for um, for the national insurance between UK and uh, Australia. So you can no longer accrue um, entitlement for UK state pension if you go and work in Australia, but for for decades you could. Now. What, um, so like I said, what's happening from next year, though, is that if you um, move to the EU and you've worked in Australia, Canada or New Zealand at any time in your in your um, career history and you thought you had a full entitlement, certainly if you would remained in the UK, you'd have got your 35 years, tick the box. Thank you very much. But then you decide to go and emigrate to Spain. All of a sudden you lose you lose the years that you spent uh, working overseas in those territories from the qualifying years. So let's take an example of a guy who has um, decides to uh, move to Spain and on the 1st of January next year, but he's worked 20 years, say, in, um, in Australia in the 1980s and 1990s, and he got credit uh, qualifying years when they still had the reciprocal agreements between the UK and Australia. So he got his full 35 years, which included 20 years working in Australia, and rather than stay in the UK, he decides to go and spend his retirement in Spain. But if he goes from the 1st of January next year onwards, he will lose 20 of those qualifying years. 
even though if he'd stayed in the UK, he'd have them. So the fact he's emigrating to the EU, he loses those uh, qualifying years that were um, spent working in, in Australia. Same guy, assuming he fast tracks his plans and goes today, he will get the full UK state pension. That 35 qualifying years will not be curtailed by the 20 years spent working in Australia. So this is a big deal that's happening um, in just about... Uh, four months time so it really will affect the plans of people looking to emigrate now what if you are a uk citizen who um has accrued all your full state pension entitlements you've done your 35 years yes you might have spent some time working abroad and let's say you're already over there in spain so you might have same example you might have spent time in australia new zealand canada in your working life now right now you work you are you are in spain retired but haven't started taking your uk state pension yet that doesn't matter even if you start taking your uk state pension from the first of january next year onwards the mere fact that you're physically present and you've emigrated to that territory in spain or portugal wherever in the eu that doesn't matter the new rules won't bite it's all about the physical act of moving to the overseas country in the eu from the first of january where you have to then look back at your qualifying years, and if any of those were spent in Australia, New Zealand, or Canada, they will be knocked off. Um, so that is is quite a big deal, um, and it is it is um, going to be of concern to to uh, you know future ex people who were expats before who are going to be ex expats again when they uh, emigrate into the EU. Um, I guess on the flip side of this, on one of the, the benefits of moving to the EU, yes, there is a downside if you've worked in any of those other territories. Um, I would suggest for most people um, it's not going to be a concern, but there's still thousands and thousands of people who have worked in, in Canada, Australia, New Zealand. But um, on, the, on the, the bright side, if you will, of, of moving to the EU from a UK step state pension point of view is that you will be still subject to the triple lock increase every year in your state pension. So uh, let's take the example where you, you do go to Spain and you start taking your UK state pension. And of course, that will be increased every year uh, in line with the current triple lock, which is the higher of two and a half percent wage inflation or general inflation measured under the CPI method. And of course, wage inflation is set to be quite high this year because of the bounce back from the pandemic around about 8%, something like that, they're forecasting. Um, I've got a separate video on that. In fact, when I did that video, we, we were thinking it might be 4 or 5%. It looks like it could be 8% now. Anyway, so, but you will get that. You will get that annual increase in your UK state pension if you live in the EU. Compared to actually some of the countries that you may choose to emigrate to, um, where you don't get that increase every year, you get an amount that is fixed at the point that you emigrate and it is frozen to that level. So let's say you, you've got your 35 years and you go in this year. So it's uh, best part of 180 pounds a week, and but it'll remain at that amount, um, regardless of how long you're in that overseas territory. Uh, but in, if it's an EU country, then you are going to get the annual increase. So just a, an overview there on uh, changes to, to pensions, UK state pensions affecting expats, both um, people who are about to well it's, it's it's all about people who are about to emigrate and also bearing in mind those who do based on their past and whether or not they were expats in the past so if you do like this video please do subscribe right there and i'll see you soon